So I'm holding a replica of this monument right here. Some of the guides call it the meatball monument for obvious reasons. But this is the 5th New Hampshire. 5th New Hampshire belonged to uh, Edward Cross's brigade, 1st Brigade of Caldwell's 1st Division of the 2nd Corps. Now when Sickles had moved out and it was revealed the Confederates were going to attack them, reinforcements were rushed to the area as quickly as possible to shore up Sickles' 3rd Corps line. Among them, we talked about some 5th Corps soldiers, but these guys came from the 2nd Corps. That's why you see monuments here in the wheat field that have the trefoil or the three-leaf clover, the core symbol of the 2nd Corps. All right, the 5th New Hampshire belonged to that 1st Brigade of the 1st Division. Where they were originally is, if you know Gettysburg, was the domed monument on Cemetery Ridge, the Pennsylvania Memorial. They were over there, but they were called upon to come over here and reinforce the wheat field fight. And so they would arrive, the 1st Brigade to arrive in this area would be Cross's Brigade. The 5th New Hampshire, in essence, forms the left flank of Cross's brigade. If you come with me and look down here, you're going to see a line of flank markers and monuments. That's the rest of Cross's brigade on down that direction. The closest to us is the 148th Pennsylvania. Then we also have the 81st Pennsylvania and the 61st New York somewhere in that vicinity. So the 5th New Hampshire, this was actually John Caldwell's brigade um, before Caldwell was promoted to division command. So Cross, who was the senior colonel, who was the colonel at that time of the 5th New Hampshire, gets elevated to brigade command. Cross was, no <laughs> Cross was a, an interesting figure, a uh, very tough guy. He, was one, he started one of the first newspapers in Arizona when the war starts, he is offered a commission in the state forces of California. He rejects that and instead comes and raises the 5th New Hampshire. Cross was noted for wearing a red bandana in battle. And he would be there and it just be there for a sight for his men. Well, if you're in the middle of battle and you're throwing on a red bandana, what? guess what that makes you? A target. A target, yeah. So... Cross was also noted for being wounded multiple times, much like myself, injured multiple times. He knows, basically, that's what his role is. He's there to inspire his soldiers. His men love him, okay? The whole brigade doesn't. The 148th Pennsylvania, in fact, does not. The, one for the men in rank and file of that regiment are not happy with Cross at the time of Gettysburg because what he has done is their commander, James Beaver, had been wounded at Chancellorsville, the battle previous to Gettysburg. And there was a lieutenant colonel who should have taken command. But Cross didn't trust that lieutenant colonel. So he takes the commander of the 81st Pennsylvania, Hugh Boyd McKean, and puts him in charge of the 148th Pennsylvania. Oh boy, howdy. The 148th Pennsylvania is unhappy about that because Cross brought in an outsider to command them. They are not pleased. Well, anyway, they're going to form up here along this line regardless. They're not happy, but they're going to do this because this is their job. The 5th New Hampshire is here, but they kind of stall out in their advance. Cross, who that morning is in a different type of mood. Winfield Scott Hancock, the 2nd Corps commander, is going to approach him and say, Cross, this is the day that's going to bring you your star. Meaning, being promoted to Brigadier General. Cross says, no, General, this will be my last battle. Instead of tying on a red bandana that day, he ties on a black bandana. So you have, um, basically, the, the brigade has stalled out here, essentially where their monuments are. And Cross is coming over to confer with Hapgood, the commander here, to get this moving so they can keep pushing forward. If you want to turn around, however, see that boulder behind the stop sign? A Confederate rifleman is going to be behind that and he's going to shoot Cross in the abdomen, basically right where their monument is right here. This is where Cross will fall. That's like 50 yards? Yeah, not too far. That's exactly what the, the regimental history says. Okay. 50 yards ahead, behind a boulder. 50 yards ahead, behind a boulder. Wow. And so 
what happens is uh, Cross goes down. Hapgood goes, avenge. He orders Sergeant Charles Phelps to avenge the colonel. Phelps will. He'll kill the man who gets who gets Cross. But if you come around here to the side of the monument here, Charles Phelps himself will not survive the battle. To be killed or mortally wounded. But yes, so they do. The problem is now, essentially, Cross's brigade is without its commander. And now McKean, who has been in charge now of the 148th Pennsylvania, has been elevated to brigade command because he's the senior colonel. And McFarland, the lieutenant colonel who Cross didn't trust, now commands the 148th. So that's kind of the weird thing that happens in this type of thing. The 81st and 61st who are out there in the wheat field, they're going to catch fire because they're hanging out there. Eventually they're going to withdraw when more Union reinforcements arrive. The 5th New Hampshire and the 148th Pennsylvania will stick around, and they're going to be fighting with, among others, Ty Anderson's Georgians, uh, a regiment from Benning's Georgia Brigade. They're going to be fighting some Laws Alabamans, and they're going to be fighting the 1st Texas. So they're heavily engaged in this area. And they finally withdraw when Sidney Burbank and the regulars arrive. That's when they finally fall back. They bring in, and they'll tell you this, the 5th New Hampshire says they'll bring in 182 engaged. So it's not a big yeah, regiment. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great guy. <laughs> That's awesome. So out of 182, they suffer 81 casualties. You want to come and see one of the best uh, flank markers? Have you been down here? I haven't. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to head that way. You know, each monument has a series of flank markers denoting left and right flank. Right? This is probably one of the best flank markers in all of the Well, the flank marker, that's like a monument unto itself. Left flank. Left of the <laughs> New Hampshire, left of Cross's Brigade, left of Caldwell's Division. And in case they want you to let you know, at this point, the left of the 2nd Army Corps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Because why not? Because <laughs> yes, it's true. But yes. <laughs> so why was Cross hanging out with the... Because it was his old corps? Is that why he's... Or his old regiment? Is that why he's hanging out with the 5th well, New Hampshire? He's, he's trying to coordinate the offensive back into the woods over here. He's trying to get his brigade moving forward. So he's trying to coord... We think, because he doesn't survive the battle... We think he's trying to coordinate everybody, so he's communicating with his left flank first, then moving down the line, right? And this is where he's shot. So it's not communicated to anybody else what they want to do, so they're just hanging out here in the wheat field, fighting, until those two regiments over there who are hanging out in the wheat field think they're getting relieved, and they just fall back. Okay. Without further instruction. So yeah. Yeah, so that's why Cross is down here. It's one, probably because he knows them, but probably because he understands, he knows them. If they're going to continue the offensive up this way, that he's going to need people who know him, who understand him, to lead the way. And I think the 5th New Hampshire was going to be that for them. And it just didn't happen. So I looked up the 5th New Hampshire this morning, knowing that we were going to come here, and I read of all of the Union regiments in the Civil War, the 5th New Hampshire had the most battle casualties of any regiment, 259 fatalities, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was incredible because you don't hear anything about the 5th New Hampshire. I mean, no. Gettysburg is all 1st Minnesota or 20th <laughs> Maine, or I don't even know who, who else, Baxter's Brigade. I don't know, but you never hear about the 5th New Hampshire. Yeah, 20th Maine, 1st uh, Minnesota, the Iron Brigade yeah. in the West. I mean, all those venerable units. You don't hear about these guys. Uh, but these guys were tough. These guys were tough. I didn't talk about the symbolism in their monument. Let's use the replica here all right. as a demonstration. All right. If you see it here in the regional monument, you have this slab of... Uh, New Hampshire granite and it's you have a big boulder a Pennsylvania boulder on top and four Pennsylvania boulders on bottom the symbolism here is very clear that no matter what happens here in Pennsylvania or what happened here in Pennsylvania the men of New Hampshire much like this granite did not break did not crack and did not bend under the pressure they were strong and they fought hard